Hey guys, in today's bass lesson, I'm going to take apart three legendary disco bass lines that you're guaranteed to know and will have heard before. I'm also going to show you where I've been playing them wrongly for nearly 20 years now. I'll see you inside the lesson. <laughs> Hey, it's James here from ebassguitar.com. So today's bass lesson is a follow-on from last week's lesson where we took apart four legendary funk bass riffs. Today we're going to look at four disco riffs. Disco unquestionably has to be one of the very best styles of music to play on the bass guitar. It is so much fun. So much so I've been playing these bass lines today for well over 20 years and what can often happen is we start to change little elements of them over time. So it's really helpful to revisit the original bass lines, which is what I've done for this lesson, and really observe those little areas that we've changed up. So I'm going to show you exactly how I've done that in my play, and also show you the correct version too. So just before we hear the lesson content today, I want you to know there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson, which will show you everything we're discussing today, written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below where you can grab your free copy. So bass riff number one is a good times by Chic, which has the legendary Bernard Edwards on bass. This is a four bar bass line in the key of E minor, which sounds like this. Three, four. So what we're going to do is we're going to split good times into what I call micro phrases. So the first little micro phrase is the first three beats of bar one, which is simply three open E's, which sounds like this, three, four. Really simple, straightforward, get those nice and punchy and short. So the next little micro phrase is two open E's, an F sharp and a G at the second and third fret respectively. So it's three, four, three, four. And again, three, four. So put those two first phrases together, it's like this, three, four. And then we're gonna continue into the third phrase at the end of bar two now, which is simply an A, a B, a C sharp, a D, and an E, and then we're gonna push back into the A like that. So let's put that together with the second and third microphrase. It sounds like this, three, four. Again, three, four. So let's put the first two bars together. Now let's look at bar three, which is simply two A notes on beats two and three. So it's three, four, one. Three, four, one, two, three. And then we go into the last phrase, or the last little microphrase of beats three and or bars three and four, which is this. And what this is, this is really cool because it is bouncing off an open A string. So what we do is we do two open A's, like that. And then we go to the F sharp at the fourth fret on the D string, and then back to the A again. So we end up with, and then we go to the G and then back to the A again like this. Sorry, I mean back to the F sharp at the end. So we end up with this phrase. So that is a really, really cool, funky phrase. And then the last little micro phrase of the whole thing starts off with an A, and then what we do is we go back to an open E, and then back to a B up there, and then the last three notes, the last three sixteenth notes are an E, an F sharp, and a G like this. So get that under your hand. So the last two last bars sounds like this. Three, four. And again. Like that. And again, resolving back to that open E, which is the start of the next phrase. So what I discovered when I was learning this is I was actually playing that very final phrase wrong. What I was playing was this. Which to my 
my ears still sounds really good, but what Bernard Edwards is actually playing when I revisited is this. And again. Subtly different, but sounds really great. So let's hear what this sounds like with the drum track. So bass riff number two is the legendary Sister Sledge tune, also played by Bernard Edwards on bass, called We Are Family, and this is what the bass line sounds like. Three, four. So this is a four bar bass line in the key of A minor. And there is one pattern which goes throughout the whole of it, which is really important to get down. But first of all, it's based on a four bar chord sequence, which is simply an A minor to a G to a D and then back to a G again like that. So those are our fundamental sort of chordal bass notes that we need to get down. So this starts off with a push on beat four, so it's three, four. So we need to get that on beat four and. Then we rest on the first beat of the bar and we have this phrase here that we need to get down, which starts off with an A. Then we need to, on the last 16th note of the second beat, we need to play an E like that. And then we hammer back onto the A like this. So we end up with like that. But then we go straight into an octave A on the six, second 16th note of the third beat. Like that. Like that. And then back down to an A like that halfway through the third beat. So this is the phrase that we need to get down. Starting on the second beat, one, one. So get that down and you've got the fundamentals of this bass line down. So what we need to do now is start moving this through the chord changes. So that takes the first A chord. Then what we do is we push into the G on beat four and. So it's three, four, like that. And catch that on beat four and. And then we play this same phrase again. So this is all based on the legendary octave shape that you hear so much in disco music, which sounds great on the bass guitar. So the first two bars sound like this, three, four. Then we take that phrase again up to the D. So we're just simply taking this through the chord sequence. So it's three, four. Again, we're bouncing off the open string. In this case, it is an open A, three, four. And then we go back to the G again, three, four. And then on the last two, on the last final beat of the bar, we play a G sharp at fret four and then an A, this little chromatic line to take us back. And so the final phrase is this, three, four. So put the whole phrase together, three, four. that really really great sounding bass line this phrase is played four times over a 16 bar sequence but what you'll hear Bernard Edwards do on the third phrase on the first bar so that is a bar nine uh, so yeah that's bar nine of each 16 bar phrase he does this wonderful slap offbeat slap figure which sounds like this which is simply C to a C sharp and then to a like this so we end up with this three four mm. And that lands into the second bar. But what I was playing, which was really interesting, was C to C sharp, G to A, and then E, ah, uh, sorry, E to, sorry, D to E, like that. The notes which naturally fell under the hand. But what, when I revisited the bass line, what he was playing was the, and then moving back to the F to the F sharp to the G, like that, which is a really, 
really cool sound. So make sure you listen out for that in the original record, a prime example of how we can subtly change things. So let's hear what this bass line sounds like with the drum track. So guys, if you're enjoying this lesson, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because here at ebassguitar.com, we release a lesson every single week designed especially for the beginner to intermediate bass guitar player. There's a red button somewhere around this video, so you'll be the first to know when a new lesson goes live. So Boogie Oogie Oogie is a four bar bass line where the first two bars are based over a D minor chord and the second two bars are based over a C chord. Again, as I discussed earlier, as I touched on earlier, is the octave shape is so common in disco music and Boogie Oogie Oogie is based very much on this. So let's start taking this apart a chunk or a micro section at a time. So the first chunk is simply this. So let's take that apart. So this starts off with a D at the fifth fret to two Ds at the seventh fret on the G string, like that. And then we go to the A, and then we go to the C at the third fret like that. So we have, and then we play a C and a D at the end and slide back into that D, which will take us back to the D chord at the start of the second bar. So the first bar sounds like this. Then we go into the second bar, which is this, and starts off with two octave Ds. And then we go to that open A, like that. And then we go to the D octave, pattern like that. And then the C sharp at fret four, and then we go to the C, like that. So we end up with this pattern, which is really, really cool, which sounds great. So the second bar sounds like this. Again. So let's put those first two bars together. So this is where things get interesting. I've been playing this tune for years now and what I always instinctively used to do was mirror that first pattern when we got to the C chord and play this. And it sounds really cool. I'm going back to the B flat there, which is a, I think is a really musical and natural thing to do. But if you listen to the bass part, what it actually does is this. It's much, much simpler. So what that is, is it's literally a C uh, octave pattern like that. Back to that open A. And then we stay on the C for beats three and beats four on. Like that. Like that. And then the last bar is simply this. It starts off with two C's up the octave. Then we play the open A. And then we literally play the chromatic pattern. So we could do a C and then C sharp to take us back to the beginning like that. So the third and fourth bar sounds like this. So let's put that whole four bar phrase together. So this is a great pattern for really getting octaves under your hand and moving those octave shapes around the neck. So take this apart slowly to begin with and then start speeding it up. And once you get comfortable, you'll start seeing the little areas where you can put little extra fills and little extra ideas in there. One of the things that I love doing is putting, putting disco doubles in there on the, oct on the chromatic band. Like that really has a great forward propulsion to it. But get really comfortable with that initial bass riff first, and then you can start changing it up because there's a lot of fun to be had with this pattern. Thank you. 
guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson, make sure you download the free PDF so you can see the three legendary disco bass lines we've covered written out in standard notation and tab. Also, if you're looking to push your bass guitar playing forward and understand the concepts that we've covered in this lesson at a deeper level, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bassland Plus, which is a full program designed especially for the beginner to intermediate bass guitar player, which will teach you all of the most important fundamental skills you need. There's a link in the description below where you can join free today with a 14-day trial. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com and I'll catch you next week.